Justin Nornuff here, Baseball Rebellion. I'm going to show you something very interesting about Masahiro Tanaka. But before I do that, I want to comment quickly on just how well he uses his lower body to generate momentum and really allow his mass to move together down the mound. Okay, he does a phenomenal job here, does it far better than most professional pitchers. Um, and it's something that he really sets his up, himself up for a very powerful delivery. Okay, but he kind of runs himself into a little bit of trouble in this frame. And what you'll see here is, and what I'm really going to specifically talk about here, is his arm action and really his arm swing as it comes out of the glove and then really for him as it comes back into his body into what we call retraction and shoulder height. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move into this back view here, which is I'm going to illustrate of kind of how all this occurs. So what you'll notice here, I want you to take note of where his posture is to start. So he's upright to start and as he breaks his hand and starts to move those hips, you'll notice that his posture moves forward. Now this move is absolutely necessary if you really want to get low down the mound and get your hips involved and really generate a lot of force moving towards your target. Okay, so this move here is great. What's not great is the, the something that he starts to do as a product of staying down with his posture too long. So if you'll notice here, he gets forward with his posture, but right about here, is where you know the, the delivery in the body needs to start opening up into rotation okay and allowing himself to really prepare to accelerate his trunk better and what happens is he just gets stuck here and as he continues to stay forward his elbow starts to move into this retraction here so if you draw a line from his shoulder to his elbow it's starting to get behind his back and because he continually stays forward now the shoulder hike occurs which you'll see in this next couple frames you can see how his elbow is starting to pick up his hand here okay so this is the shoulder height so really he has a combo of some negative characteristics in, involved with arm action that now are going to directly relate to um, him being not as quite as efficient in his acceleration okay so what you'll see is because he delayed so long with his posture Right about now, he needed to start moving upwards with his uh, posture to move more upright and then into thoracic extension. But he stays down, he shows his retraction, he shows the shoulder height. So he eventually gets back here, as you can see. So you can see how he's moving in that thoracic extension. He's trying to get back up on top of the ball. But when he hits here, his forearm is at you know a 45 degree position instead of it being completely vertical. So if you'll notice, his forearm is slightly offset here where we would want it to be more vertical behind his head with the baseball being about here. OK, now why is this important? OK, it's important because when the foot hits, we want the forces on the shoulder and the body to be absorbed evenly and allow the trunk to accelerate the arm forward. OK, and what you'll notice here in these next couple clips, because he's late getting to this position, then his head and his upper torso have got to come more horizontal in, in order to bring his arm through and he kind of has some forces going um, more towards this way as you'll indicate from his head and his left shoulder pulling off and he tries to stay connected or stay through it as best he can it's just not as good as he, what he's capable of doing but this is all you know an indicator of what his arm action led to as he started to accelerate okay now I'm going to show you a quick example here of Kofax okay now actually let me revert back really quickly so I've been reading a lot of literature about analysts and writers talking about this position okay the hooking but no one quite knows exactly what it means in terms of how it creates negative arm action if it does create negative arm action and what it really means in the whole essence of the delivery so Tanaka hooks, okay, behind his back, but he stays hooked and then lets his elbow and gets to that shoulder hike, okay? But he's also doing something drastically different than what you'll see here of Kofax. So Kofax, and the reason I provide the example, it's hard to see, but if you look at this little frame here, you can see how his hand, he's showcasing the hook position as well, okay? But what he does tremendously better 
is you've noticed where his posture is slightly hunched over slightly forward he starts to move upwards way earlier than Tanaka does and when his front foot securely hits what do you notice his forearm and his hand are completely vertical over here behind his head so then as he rotates everything can go together and you don't see the head strain off the target like you did with Tanaka here okay so his acceleration in terms of his trunk and ultimately where the ball comes out is going to be drastically altered just because of the position of his arm swing so hopefully long term you know his his amount of retraction his amount of shoulder height can be toned down and it can start matching his overall delivery to help him efficiently use his body in the best manner that he's probably capable of this is Justin Orndorff with Baseball Rebellion thanks for listening